In this episode, we explore underwater in the Thai Islands and try a different pace of life. In the last three and a half years, we have sailed halfway around the world on our 37-foot boat, Florence, exploring new countries, new cultures, and sharing our adventure along the way. For the last week, we have been drifting around the stunning anchorages of Phuket and Krabi while we prepare for the Indian Ocean and wait for our new sails to be made. Making the most of these gentle sailing additions while we have them. I'm loving this easy sailing. We've got flat water, nice gentle breezes, hardly any shipping to avoid. It's lovely. Perfect conditions. This area is fairly busy with charter boats, but being in an area of charter boats is actually sometimes an advantage for us because it means that there's lots of anchorages within an easy day sail, that the water's generally flat and the sailing easy, and also there's a ton of free information online in terms of uh, where to anchor, where to pick up a mooring ball, um, where you can get provisions, basically yeah, all the information that we need. That's normally information that we have to work a bit harder to get so it makes being somewhere like this really easy, really cruisy sailing. And there's no need for night sailing, it's been about two weeks since we did an overnight passage. I think the Indian Ocean is going to come as a bit of a shock. We are sailing to the tiny island of Koh Ha. This is our final stop before we need to return to Phuket to restock with food and water. So here we are at Koh Ha. Some friends of ours came out here on holiday about a month ago and they said that here was some of the best snorkeling they've ever seen. It's a beautiful spot but the sun is so hot today that the deck on Florence has become really, really hot. And talking to you here, I'm, I'm like one of those lizards in the desert that has to keep moving from foot to foot to stop the feet burning. Time to jump in the water, I think. Oh, that is lovely and cool. Just a short swim from our mooring is this stunning little beach. Time to have a look at the reef. This is the clearest water we have seen in months. The water clarity is so much better in these offlying islands than those closer to Phuket. There are tons of fish here, and they don't seem bothered by us as we swim through the middle of the huge shoals.
There is not a huge amount of coral here, but we still found some healthy patches. These delicate fan corals are one of our favourites. We've been sailing in the polluted waters of the Malacca Straits for months, with water so dirty that we've only jumped in when we've absolutely had to. This is a whole different world. Living on a small boat, the water around us forms a huge part of our life and living space. Being surrounded by clean water has a huge effect on our sense of well-being on board. These crown of thorn starfish eat the reef and are actually a pest. Large concentrations can destroy a reef. That's cool. Well, that's pretty cool snorkeling. We had the place to ourselves for a while. There's no one else here. And then, just before we got out, this slot arrived. There's now like 10 uh, day trip tour boats, which were packed full of people. All the people have climbed off into the water. It is absolutely packed in there now. I think we're gonna have a cup of tea, wait for it all to clear off. And it's so good in there. I mean, I can see why they all come here. We'll have a cup of tea, wait till they go, and then we'll jump back in. It did eventually clear out as all the day boats went home. That's one of the real advantages of cruising life. We don't have to go home at the end of the day. Florence is our home. We'd have loved to spend longer cruising the islands here, but we're running low on food and water, so we need to head back to Phuket to restock. It has actually been over a month since we last filled up with fresh water, and we have not seen any rain, so we only have a few days worth left. As you probably know, we don't have a water maker on for us, which normally means we just come alongside a dock, put the hose in the tank and fill her up, and we've got 500 litres that lasts us a month. But here in Thailand it's a bit more difficult to do that because the water isn't drinkable from the tap. So Howard from Simpson Marine kindly invited us in to spend a night on the dock and fill up our water tanks using their water maker. So this is what they use to make sure they've got good clean drinking water on all of their charter boats here. Florence has got big water tanks so this is going to be going for a good few hours. Of course being alongside the dock with fresh water means that we've got to wash everything. So our curtains, our seat covers, the entire boat is going to get a really good clean. In preparation for crossing the Indian Ocean, we've made this extra large rain catcher. We're going to be sailing in remote areas for about three months where there is no water supply. So we're going to be relying on this to catch rainwater to drink. It's the old fashioned way of doing it before water makers. It worked. Well, we hope it's going to work. <laughs> we've really enjoyed cruising the Thai islands, but we've not been everywhere. We didn't go to James Bond Island here because we heard it's so busy, but the guys at Simpson Marine said you don't have to go to James Bond Island to get the James Bond experience. Time for something a little different.
really expect to feel an affinity with the boat or a real enjoyment being out on the water like I do with sailing but this has been great fun. It's completely and utterly different to what we're used to. Really chalk and cheese but I actually really quite like it. The only problem is there is no way that this would get us across the Indian Ocean. We'd run out of fuel after the first five minutes. Yeah, but how long would it take this to get from Port Dixon, where we started our trip in Malaysia, up to here in Phuket? Uh, this boat did it in 30 hours, um, which means just one night, really. And um, we had multiple nights, multiple thunderstorms, dodging all the fishing boats, whereas this thing would just blast straight past them. And we had lots of wind and no wind. Doesn't matter in this. The beam high, and constantly in the breeze but in the shade. It's really enjoyable. It's very different to sitting in the deep, safe cockpit on Florence. So the question is, will Howard, the boss of Simpson Marine, let us have a go at driving this brand new million pound yacht? Of course he will. He's a nice chap. It's all a bit different. Oh. Apart from this, got one of these on Florence. Just the same as Florence. Just the same. It's much easier than docking Florence. It's got a joystick. So you can actually go sideways? Yes, intentionally. Sideways, yeah. Go intentionally go sideways like this, look. Just like that. You can just do it with a finger. Yeah, totally, yeah. And this is and they have exactly the same drive system on cruise to cruise. Okay, hold them at 3,000. Now you're on the wheel? Yeah. Just look at my grid. <laughs> yeah, you can now, now give it, take it up to three and a half thousand. experience we have been transformed into motor boaters so we went out and we bought the biggest engine that we could with more power well okay this one's actually 0.2 horsepower more than our old one but the main good thing about this one is it actually works, whereas our old one was broken beyond repair. It's been a great little holiday exploring the islands around near Phuket, but now we are heading back to Phuket itself to go and pick up our new sails. We hope you enjoyed that video. It was a bit of a change of pace to our usual lifestyle. Next time we are back to normal for us, we are going sailing, but we are picking up our brand new sails and we are very excited to take them out for the first time. Definitely. As always, we want to say a big thank you to the people who make these videos possible. That's our patrons and especially our star patrons, Alan Becky, Kate and Peter Atkins, Robin Rima, Sonuyi Yarvanen, and John Bowler. Thanks guys. I am so excited about this. This is like Christmas. <laughs>